And now, from the Fox Network Center in Los Angeles, here are senior correspondent Diana Nyad and host Chris Myers. Hi, and welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Next weekend, the U.S. Gymnastics Championships are in Sacramento, California, for young girls. Another critical test on their road to Sydney. But as senior correspondent Diana Nyad reports, the trials for these gymnasts and their families began a long time ago. Diana? Hey, Chris, it's a tougher sport than any outsider can imagine. And as you know, women's gymnastics is the glamour sport of the Summer Olympic Games. The aerial acrobatics mesmerize and thrill us. And because these young athletes make it look so easy, it's hard to imagine the pain, the incredible discipline they endure to attain excellence. And what's more, to maintain that excellence, they actually try to delay the natural growth of their bodies. Emotionally, they're expected to perform like grown women, while physically, they can't succeed unless they have the bodies of children. And here is the premier American prospect for Sydney. Very nice. Seventeen-year-old Vanessa Adler has vaulted into the national gymnastics spotlight over the last year. She's a tremendous vaulter with so much power. Now ranked second in the country, she is prepared to perform on the world's biggest stage, next year's Olympic Games. Wow. The first time I was on, got on television, that's when I was like, okay, I got to train hard, you know, because I want to be the best, because I knew I could actually get there. The dazzling moves of any world-class gymnast come only after long hours of training, unmatched in any other sport. They train seven to eight hours a day, more even than extreme endurance athletes such as marathoners and swimmers who put in three to four hours a day. Gymnasts are also constantly plagued by injuries. The whole body is put under tremendous stress by these convoluted twists and jarring landings. They learn to live with blisters, sprains, even fractures. Usually you never find one gymnast that doesn't have something wrong with them at one certain point in time, you know. World-class female gymnasts like Vanessa here are all engaged in an intense race against the clock and against Mother Nature. I mean, in virtually all other sports, an athlete wants to come into maturity, wants to get bigger and stronger. But in gymnastics, you want to get stronger, but you don't want to get bigger. Puberty and the onset of female characteristics can be the kiss of death in this sport. The window of opportunity for huge success is very, very short. The desperation to compete with a petite child childlike body wasn't always the status quo in gymnastics. Back in 1956, the top two Olympic gymnasts were over five feet tall, weighed about 120 pounds, and were 35 and 21 years of age. In the 1970s, when the East Germans used a varied menu of performance-enhancing drugs, their field athletes used drugs that built their bodies bigger, while their gymnasts used drugs to wow. suppress growth. One, two. American gymnasts are not linked to drug use, but they do overtrain to the point that they keep body fat unnaturally low. The body gets a signal to delay puberty. Vanessa Atler, for instance, didn't start puberty until this year, very late at age 17. I never really grew at all for a long time because I was constantly, constantly working out the whole time. Here she goes, double back! Wow. The first of the tiny champions was the stunning Nadia Komenich, who at age 14 scored a perfect 10 at the 1976 Games and wowed the world with her charisma. And it was her coach, the world-famous Bella Caroli, who was credited with the new look of the female gymnast. You got it, Toby. You got it. Caroli has produced more than three dozen Olympians, including Nadia, Mary Lou Retton, Dominique Mochianu, and Carrie Strong. And kind of, I was responsible for bringing a new change and a new uh, flow into the sport of gymnastics, uh, bringing up a very young, uh, tiny, and uh, incomparably smaller size uh, young participants. So Nadia was the one really who, who turned on the light and opened the field for the very young ones. Following in Nadia's footsteps, 16-year-old, 92-pound Mary Lou Retton was another superstar of tiny stature. Representing Team USA. By the 1990s, the average female Olympic gymnast in the U.S. was 16 years of age, 4 foot 9 inches tall, and weighed 83 pounds. That's 6 and a half inches shorter and 23 pounds lighter 
than the gymnasts who competed just 20 years earlier. And this push to peak pre-puberty has taken a toll on many young women in the sport. A 1992 study by the NCAA revealed that 51% of college gymnastics programs report eating disorders among team members, higher than any other sport. Dr. Michael Strober, director of eating disorders at UCLA's Neuropsychiatric Institute, tells us why anorexia and bulimia occur so frequently in gymnastics. It is a sport that requires enormous restraint, self-control, compliance, perfectionism, the capacity to work hard and persevere. World-class competitors will often consume less than a thousand calories a day, even while training six to eight hours. Compare that to a world-class cyclist who consumes some 10,000 calories a day. To me, it, it seems like a, a hopeless situation then. I mean, the girls need to stay waif-like in order to compete at a world-class level, but they can never be really healthy and develop in a healthy way if they do that. The extremism is is decidedly unhealthy for the, for the development of a person emotionally and psychologically and physically. You can't embrace normalcy of your growth and development in puberty and succeed in gymnastics given the reality of the sport. For both Mary Lou and Nadia, once they quit the sport and its demands, their bodies filled out to normal adult proportions. Embrace up everybody. But this new era of exaggeratedly petite stature has, in some cases, such as that of Christy Henrich, led to tragedy. In 1988, Christy was a potential Olympian at the top of her sport. Her mother, Sandy, and Christy's former fiancé, Bo Marino, remember how their lives changed forever after a judge at a world-class event told Christy she needed to lose weight. And I remember picking her up at the airport, and the first words out of her mouth when she got off the plane, I'm like, hi, Christy. And she says, she said, Mom, I have to lose weight. I went, what? She weighed 95 pounds at that point. I go, what are you talking about? She said, a judge told me you're very fat. You will never make the Olympic team. It definitely was an obsession with her. And you just saw it grow and grow and grow. It got to the point where she wouldn't even eat in front of me. Under the constant criticisms and scrutiny of judges and her coach, Al Fong, Christy fell victim to the syndrome often associated with women's gymnastics, anorexia and bulimia. She didn't want this eating disorder, and she would tell me it just got a hold of me and it won't let go. It was like she was drowning, and I couldn't pull her out of the water. For seven years, she battled the disease and was in and out of hospitals nearly a dozen times before she died of multiple organ failure in 1994. Women's gymnastics is a sport of extreme highs. There is no more popular event at the summer games, but it's also a sport of extreme lows. Christy Henrich, at her best, was about 95 pounds, and she felt like she could beat the world. At the end, her last time in the hospital, she weighed 47. Anorexia was something she just couldn't beat. Sometimes I felt like she, she spent her life in the gym and then she died. All the medals in the world, all of that, it's not worth it. Christy Henrich's death signaled the low point for the sport of gymnastics. And to make sure this would never happen again, a number of changes are on the horizon. Few families have had to endure tragedies like the hemorrhages, but unfortunately, the expectations of parents and coaches can put young gymnasts at risk, leaving them with lifelong emotional and physical scars. When we come back, another family ripped apart by the quest for glory. Emotionally, I've been, you know, scarred basically for life. At a sport searching for balance. Oh, she's up. Oh. As Going Deep continues, here's Chris Myers. Welcome back. The excitement and the glamour of women's gymnastics is undeniable, and so is the pressure. In a perfect world, parents and coaches would help young gymnasts keep their dreams and ambitions in perspective. But that's not always the case. As our report continues, we see how adults have failed their protégés. Now it's the sport itself that is taking steps to safeguard its most precious assets. 
Once again, here's Diana Nyack. The quest for perfection in women's gymnastics can dramatically alter a young girl's childhood. Quick. From the day she starts kindergarten throughout her high school years, the seven to eight hours of training are a daily grind. And the extremely low calorie diets are almost inhumane and have led to cases of serious eating disorders. At such tender ages, these girls often look to their coaches as Spengali's of sorts. The coach is always right. Can I have that big hug? Can I have that big hug? And the thirst for fame and fortune in this sport can keep parents from putting their children's interests first. I have to say, that's the best floor performance I've ever seen her do. Dominique Mochianu was one of the sports elite last summer when her world was ripped apart by money, ambition, and a family feud fought in public. The gymnastic team! Dominique was just 14 when she helped the U.S. women win team gold in Atlanta. It's a great accomplishment for the whole team. Instantly, the spotlight grew and money poured in. That's also when Dominique's parents took control and allegedly mismanaged her investments. Emotionally, I've been, you know, scarred basically for life. Last October, Dominique rebelled. She sued and won financial independence from her parents. Well, now her parents and Dominique are working towards reconciliation. But parents aren't always the problem. She'll do four skills in a row. At these young ages, oh, children are also oh. under the influence of their coaches. Yeah. Bella Caroli, one of the world's so best, awesome. is often criticized for his but toughness. I never been too tough. I've been sometimes so soft, uh, the ones who demanded the softness, that <laughs> I, could not, I could not believe. And just take it to Kelly Strug. She was probably one of the child. They will never have to erase my voice, ever. Or look at Nadia at that time. She was the toughness, I mean, the living toughness on the floor. I never had to be tough with her, because she was tough with herself. Beautiful double twist. 1984 Olympian Kathy Johnson Clark believes most coaches have good intentions, but she admits they can have a nearly hypnotic effect that can be damaging. Because the athletes are so young, I think coaches and are afraid to let them have their own mind. They feel like they have to lay it out for them and do everything but breathe for them. When Bella Caroli coached the women's gymnastics team to gold at the 96 Olympics, Kerry Strug and Dominique Mochianu were two of his shining stars. They performed under bright lights, but they were in pain. Mochianu competed with a four-inch stress fracture in her leg. Strug became the game's superstar with her famous second vault which she executed on a severely sprained ankle after Caroli encouraged her to compete with the injury. It was a widely criticized decision, but one Caroli still defends today. Are they doing it because they know. They know this is my moment, this is my thing, this is not a dead or alive situation. U.S. Gymnastics has now brought on board nutritionists and psychological consultants to work with athletes, coaches, and parents. And they brought in former Olympians like Kathy Rigby, a difficult one-arm walkover. Who won her 12-year battle with anorexia and bulimia to mentor athletes. I'm really proud of gymnastics in that um, there is an organization within our federation that they are now addressing issues that, you know, that affect uh, young athletes, whether it's eating disorders or transitions or, you know, who do I call if I, I don't like what's going on in the gym. Perhaps today's stars are lucky to benefit from the mistakes of the past. Vanessa Atler, whom we met earlier as one of America's leading candidates for the Sydney Olympic Games next summer, represents all that is balanced in a sport. And her coach, Steve Rybacki, seems to understand the fine line between pushing and pushing too hard. If you push too far, you get them in a negative situation where they're not going to be progressing or they're not going to be reaching or striving for their goals. And then, if you don't push hard enough, they're not going to get to their goal. It's a constant uh, decision every single day, how much is too much. You still backed off. You're still a little bit far away again. You feel Vanessa Atler uh, has kind of done it right. Her, her circle of people have done it right, don't you? She is a kid who has been trained not to diet. What she does is she works really hard. I think she knows the foods that work really well for her, and she eats what she wants, when she wants to eat it. Her weight is what it is, and she's beautiful, 
and she's strong and she's powerful and she's healthy. Vanessa Adler is healthy, but what about the sport of gymnastics, once dangerously off balance? Will it regain its equilibrium? Diana, one of the things that gymnastics has done to try and help the problem, they set an age limit, 16, but it is controversial. It's very controversial. I mean, you know, in one way, I guess it'll solve some of the real young girls getting into the problems we just talked about. But how many great athletes have we known who have been 14 and 15? I mean, Nadia Komanich, Chris Everett, we would have never seen these girls. And they came into their maturity in every way at the right age. So, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of think it's a shame. I remember asking Bella Caroli at the Summer Games uh, in Atlanta what he thought of an age limit. He said, well, at birth, I think, would be yeah, a good yeah, time. He likes to start young. <laughs> Taking does. it to that extreme. Why is there such an elite drop-off in, in gymnastics from the, 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 the top half and then the rest of the pack, more than really any other sport? You're absolutely right. I mean, think about if we went out to see the 100th tennis player, the 100th golfer. Uh, of course, consistency is different, but they, they look, their skill level looks just about the same as the number one guy or woman. And in this sport, my God, the drop-off is by the time you get, honestly, to the 12th 13th, 15th person, even at the Olympic Games, those people can, can, can't even complete the routines that the number one and the gold medalists do. So there, it's, it's a tribute to the level that they spend in the gym. Ten years, eight hours a day, nobody else does that. It's a strong commitment, and hopefully the U.S. team will be in the medal hunt again. They will be. They will in be. The, uh, in the games in Sydney. Thanks very much, Diane. Okay. Hey, coming up in just two years. Gymnasts are also constantly plagued by injuries. The whole body is put under tremendous stress by these convoluted twists and jarring landings. They learn to live with blisters, sprains, even fractures. Usually you never find one gymnast that doesn't have something wrong with them at one certain point in time, you know. World-class female gymnasts like Vanessa here are all engaged in an intense race against the clock and against Mother Nature. I mean, in virtually all other sports, an athlete wants to come into maturity, wants to get bigger and stronger. But in gymnastics, you want to get stronger. And this ball with so much power. Now ranked second in the country, she is prepared to perform on the world's biggest stage, next year's Olympic Games. Wow. The first time I was on, got on television, that's when I was like, okay, I got to train hard, you know, because I want to be the best, because I knew I could actually get there. The dazzling moves of any world-class gymnast come only after long hours of training, unmatched in any other sport. They train seven to eight hours a day, more even than extreme endurance athletes such as marathoners and swimmers who put in three to four hours a day. But you don't want to get bigger. Puberty and the onset of female characteristics can be the kiss of death in this sport. The window of opportunity for huge success is very, very short. The desperation to compete with a petite, childlike body wasn't always the status quo in gymnastics. Back in 1956, the top two Olympic gymnasts were over five feet tall, weighed about 120 pounds, and were 35 and 21 years of age. In the 1970s, when the East Germans used a varied menu of performance-enhancing drugs, their field athletes... It looks so easy, it's hard to imagine the pain, the incredible discipline they endure to attain excellence. And what's more, to maintain that excellence, they actually try to delay the natural growth of their bodies. Emotionally, they're expected to perform like grown women, while physically, they can't succeed unless they have the bodies of children. And here is the premier American prospect for Sydney. Very nice. Seventeen-year-old Vanessa Atler has vaulted into the national gymnastics spotlight over the last year. She's a tremendous... And now, from the Fox Network Center in Los Angeles, here are senior correspondent Diana Nyad and host Chris Myers. Hi, and welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Next weekend, the U.S. Gymnastics Championships are in Sacramento, California, for young girls. Another critical test on their road to Sydney. But as senior correspondent Diana Nyad reports, the trials for these gymnasts and their families began a long time ago. Diana? Uh, Chris, it's a tougher sport than any outsider can imagine. And as you know, women's gymnastics is the glamour sport of the Summer Olympic Games. The aerial acrobatics mesmerize and thrill us. And because these young athletes make